In this video, we're going to go over the Melodyne Editor Grid. Now, the grid looks exactly like a MIDI editor, which is fantastic because most of us are really familiar with editing MIDI. Not only does it look like MIDI, but it reacts like MIDI too. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Melodyne has a pitch grid on the left hand side and then a time grid up on top. Now, if you take a look at the time grid, you have a separation of bars and beats here, right? You have these thick lines that are showing the separation. Now, the lines go all the way through the bar. When they go all the way through the bar like that, it means that the grid is active. So now let's go over to our left hand side, the upper left hand corner. And now we can see that our grid is active, right? Once we unactivate the grid, it means we can freely move the node around in the edit window. Most of the time, you're going to want to work in active mode. So I'll go up to the top left hand corner and activate the grid again. Simple as that. In the top left hand corner, you can see that the time grid is not the only thing we can change. We also have options for the pitch grid and also for the view. The view area allows you to edit what you see in your arrange window. So before we get into the pitch grid and the view, let's check out the time grid. So let's look into how the time grid actually works. I've already shown you the activate grid option, which is right up here. And if we turn it off, you'll see that the lines that go through our time grid are cut in half. And then if I activate it again, they go all the way through. If we go back up to the top left and we select dynamic, you'll see that nothing actually happens to the time grid. What the dynamic option actually does is, let's say for instance, you're at this zoom position and you move in a little bit. See, we now have some more subdivisions of our beat. So we keep going in and you have more subdivisions as you zoom in. You'll see as I zoom in here, grid actually changes again. So now there's more subdivisions. And at this point, I'm as close as I can get. And it's I'm at 32nd notes. And then it goes to 16ths and then 8ths. And then all the way down to quarter notes here. Eventually it goes to bars. And then it goes from bars down to every other bar. And then from that all the way down to every third bar and so on and so forth. So it is totally dynamic. It's changing the interface to suit your viewpoint. Now, if I try and change to, let's say a, from a quarter note to a bar, nothing changes here, right? So again, I'm still in dynamic mode. So no matter what you have is set as your grid, it doesn't matter. So if I take dynamic off, now you see that we're in bar mode and it's only showing the bars. We don't have any more beats there. If we change that from a bar to a quarter note, as we zoom in, you'll see nothing changes, right? We still have quarter notes there. So again, so on and so forth, go to eighths, uh, sixteenths, you know, nothing's going to change. It's going to be keep being the same because, you know, these are constants. They're not going to change. The last option you have are 30 second notes, uh, which is a great, you know, if you really want to do some fine tuning, that's the way you want to go. Now, you can also uh, have all of these options, bar, quarter note, uh, eighth, sixteenth, and thirty seconds as triplets. So you don't have to necessarily keep them as solid numbers. They can be in triplets too, uh, as we see here on the quarter note triplet. The last option you have would be for seconds, which would be great for post-production work. If you need to change a statement from a regular statement to a question, you can actually raise the pitch of the last word and you have a question. Beyond the seconds option, there's really not many more options to go through inside the time grid. This leaves us the pitch grid and the view to go over in the next couple of videos. In the pitch grid, we're going to go over the different views and the different ways of using the pitch grid in order to enable us to have a better tuned vocal or instrument. We're going over the interface because if you don't know your way around the program, it's a lot harder to use the program to its fullest extent. It also gives you the freedom to work within the edit window without having to think about anything else. So let's go on to the next one.